without the support of these three countries, without the, the, the arms that have been given to ISIS, either they've been given directly uh, to uh, Jabhat al-Nusra and have gone to ISIS or they've gone the other way or they've gone to the Wahhabists in Saudi Arabia or in Qatar, but the French, the British, the Americans and the Turks have all supplied those who have kept ISIS going. You know, if David Cameron had won his Commons vote a couple of years ago, ISIS would now be in charge in Syria. That, the, in other words, the Middle East's most um, multi-ethnic, multicultural state would be finished. And these fanatics would be in charge and that will be thanks entirely to Western actions. Western actions that are reinforced by our propaganda. Yeah, well that was 2013. Uh, Dumas in, uh, in an interview on French television said that, that he was, uh, happened to be in England and he was invited in to see people in the government and asked if he would like to take part in a project they had and that project was an attack on Syria. Uh, but you know that's 2013. We can go back to the 1950s when the Br British intelligence was plotting the, the end of the regime in, uh, in Syria. Syria ha Syria's crime, Syria's main crime is that it is independent and it stands against um, Israel dominating that part of the world. It stands with these days with Iran, it stands with uh, the other opponents, Hezbollah, now with Russia. There is no question that if there was an election tomorrow, all those minorities that look to this government in Damascus for all its violations of human rights, and no one doubts those, look to it as its protector. Because the alternative is ISIS. And everything the West has done has been to create first the Mujahideen in Afghanistan, then with uh, the, the invasion of Iraq in 2003, then in 2011, the invasion and destruction of Libya, the Russians, uh, Putin, is, it seems to be one of the most serious people involved in the Middle East. He pointed out that uh, the, 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 the long lines of trucks, uh, ISIS trucks that are stealing Syria's oil, haven't been bombed during, haven't been interdicted during the, the, the so-called Western war against ISIS. The Western war against ISIS has been a farce. While, while feeding the, the monster of the fanaticism through Jabhat al-Nusra, through ISIS, uh, apparently th through something called the Free Syrian Army, which, which as we now know doesn't exist, in effect doesn't exist. But now we have right across the board, and that includes serious papers, papers who claim to their readers that they have some gravity, some conscience, like the Guardian, being part of this orchestration this for the escalation of war in that part of the world. The, when the Guardian suppresses comment that, uh, that, that it should be patently obvious to anybody that it is the West that has created this monster this monster of killing and suffering and of, of dispossession in the Middle East. But the propaganda is even more lethal because it comes from sources of news that have credibility, Visor, who set it up. And we've seen this, this support for fanaticism, Islamic fanaticism, by Western governments right through, you can go further back, Go back to the, the time when the Muslim Brotherhood, at its most fanatical, was given a place to organise 
in the offices of the Suez Canal Company, then con controlled by Britain. Read Mark Curtis's extraordinary book about this alliance between imperial Western governments and Muslim and the creation of Muslim fanaticism. While doing that, uh, demanding that the one uh, government that could stand up to them, that's in Damascus, be overthrown. You know, the wish list is, at, at the top of the wish list is there has to be a concerted effort, clearly, to, um, to stop the destruction of Syria, the final destruction. The second priority should be all the parties negotiating a way to deal with ISIS. I can't imagine that happening. The Western state terrorism is the main source of terrorism in the world. The victims of terrorism, the greatest number of victims of terrorism, are Muslim people. Those, those two facts need to be almost scratched on the bathroom mirrors of anybody with a public voice because they're true. The other, the, other, the other point I wish to make is that unfortunately because there is really no free information available in the mainstream in Australia, you haven't heard that ISIS is on the verge of defeat. The corridor to Turkey has been closed. The Syrian army has effectively defeated ISIS backed by the Russians, backed by Hezbollah, backed by Iran. Whatever Australia does there is beside the point. So I would think, as far as Syria is concerned, and this is not as far as Iraq is concerned, but as far as Syria is concerned, I think ISIS, I dare to make a prediction, I think ISIS will be defeated, and that defeat is happening now. It seems as though the, the, keep, keep, like, it yeah. keeps appearing a power vacuum that just, you know, ISIS are filling that. Yeah. But it was created after a previous withdrawal. I mean, I think yeah. there's a lot more to the story well, than just defeating terrorism. ISIS was created. ISIS is not much different from, from uh, the Mujahideen in Afghanistan and uh, uh, the, uh, the Al-Qaeda in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, the various tribal groups who had affiliations to Al-Qaeda and uh, others in Libya uh, and, and in Syria. All these places are, uh, are, are places where we, quote unquote, have destroyed societies. There was no jihadism in Iraq when I drove the length of Iraq shortly before the invasion. None. And I felt perfectly safe. There was no jihadism in Libya when it was controlled and run quite successfully by the dictator Gaddafi. Um, and uh, there was no jihadism in Syria before it was imported in in the guise of a rebellion in Syria. So I think the most important thing is we do have to look in that bathroom mirror, in that mirror. We talk about them constantly. We have to talk about us. Okay.